Hey guys, welcome back to Get The Greg Games on YouTube. Now I actually do have a lot of critics of my channel. What these critics of my channel will do is go into my comment section and they'll say things like, Greg, we don't do nearly enough unboxings on this channel. Which I say to those people, the great taste of Dunkaroos that we all know and love is now available in frosting form. Use it to decorate cookies or your next birthday cake. You can find Dunkaroos frosting at select retailers. This is about three or four months worth of eBay purchases coming out of these boxes. So I'm really excited to see what it is because at this point, I genuinely don't know what's inside either. Starting off with the first box here, which I did slice open already. So we'll start with that. And this is weird because I generally don't buy Nintendo DS games. So 999 on Nintendo DS, a first print copy of the game with the original cover art. There's a later reprint of this that has art that isn't as nice. And also last time I looked, this game is getting a little bit more expensive now. Glad I got it, I guess. Next up, just a small USPS box. We'll go ahead and take a peek what's in here. Oh, this is neat. This is actually going back to N64, a complete in box Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. You can see that the condition here is um, pretty squished, pretty squashed, but I bought it because, well, one, because the price was good, but it had the registration card inside as well. Getting the registration card manual, you can see cartridge is pretty nice. Even though the box itself is in pretty terrible condition, I think I paid like 70 US for it. So I'll upgrade my cartridge, upgrade my manual and just sell off the rest of the pieces. Funny enough, this is actually a game that I grew up playing. It was extremely difficult for me as a child. Just kind of a weird one that I'm sure most people don't actually have nostalgia for. Let me just stuff this back inside the Castlevania box here. You can see that this side of the box doesn't even have tabs anymore. Both of them are ripped off. Just bad condition overall. Another USPS box. This one has... Metabots AX Metabee version. This is just the complete in box version of the game, but I actually have um, probably two or 300 complete in box Game Boy Advance games. I was going for a full set for a bit. I have stopped doing that now because it's really just kind of um, unrealistic. I still do buy up some Game Boy Advance games that I think are really cool, but for the most part now, I'll actually probably be selling more Game Boy Advance than buying it in the next one to two years. The AX versions of Metabots are not as hard to find as the normal versions of Metabots. There's actually four Metabots games on Game Boy Advance, if you don't know that, which is pretty crazy. A package in a package. I always love when I actually get to do a little bit of prying open. It makes me feel, oh my God, this, ta <laughs> this table's so slippery. Ugh, there we go. Okay, we do have a game. And is this another game in here? It probably is. Please don't cut it. You paid a lot. He knows that I love to use my box cutter here uh, very liberally. We'll just grab it out and see what we got. I am kind of slowly sort of buying more modern titles. Here I bought Fallout 3 Xbox 360 with the do not sell before date on the top, which signifies that this is a first print of the game. Now I actually did pay 200 US dollars to own a factory sealed Fallout 3 on Xbox 360. Maybe you think that's crazy. Maybe you think that's good. Fallout 3 was my introduction to the Fallout series. These days though, I just don't have the time or patience to play games like Fallout. That whole open world crafting level up RPG type thing. I just don't have the time anymore. And then the other game I have here is another modern title actually, which is Little Big Planet on PS3. I know I'm calling it modern. I just mean like getting, you know, PS3, Xbox 360 level games. Given that the price of vintage stuff is going through the absolute roof, I have pivoted just a little bit to picking up some titles such as this, where this cost me, I think $30 to get a factory sealed Little Big Planet. On the back there, there is actually a magnetic security seal. So I might do a little video as well, removing that just to show you guys that it can be done safely if you take your time. Here we have bigger box. This is basically an unboxing within an unboxing. Let's go ahead and cut into this one. I am going to whip out the box cutter for this. He doesn't have a warning on it, so I'm going for it. There we go. This is VHS on the very top here. I am going to show you guys one of the VHS though, because it's pretty gaming related. It's the factory sealed VHS that tells you that Banjo-Kazooie is coming. Kind of like a hype tape basically. And that's one of those items that I just bought it because it was like 15 bucks. They are super cool items to just add to your collection at pretty minimal cost. Otherwise VHS in this one. So this box will come back later. We're actually almost done the first very big box. So that's kind of cool. Come on. Another big box. Go ahead and pry this one open here. This time we'll do better than last time because that's what we do. We make a mistake, then we learn and we do better. That's what we do. <laughs> I am absolutely not doing better. I lied. I have failed you all. It's actually insane how good the adhesive is on these USPS boxes. They are doing their job out there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is the big memes. 
Couple of big memes here. If you're part of the Discord, you were part of this as well. A couple of copies of factory sealed Bioshock on Xbox 360. Oh, very nice, very nice. These puppies were 13 bucks each and I'm likely going to retire off of them. And that's insane to think. And the last box in the big box, 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 box. Let's see what we have in this one. A couple of small USPS boxes and a decent sized one and one more decent sized one. Let's start with the smaller boxes. I think that's a video game inside of this one. Inside of here, we have N64, it looks like. Oh, nice. Just a box and manual, I believe, for Vigilante 8 on Nintendo 64. You can see it still has the original wrap on it. Absolutely fantastic condition. I'm just gonna use this copy to upgrade my already copy that I own. Nothing better than that, right? Nothing better than upgrading to a near mint box and manual. We'll do the next small box here, which this one's actually pretty heavy. So it's at least gonna be a complete in box game. Still not confident in what this could be. Oh my god, no. I know I said I was gonna do VHS later, but this one's kind of cool. I got huge FOMO, so I bought myself a trilogy edition copy of Star Wars Factory Seal. What can I say? I FOMO'd into VHS. Here's Star Wars. Go get one. Go buy it. To the moon. VHS. This is actually pretty cool. You can probably see already that I am running out of space. I just keep throwing everything to the side, which there is no room on the side for me to keep throwing things. All right, going on to one of the bigger USPS boxes. This time we get to do some prying. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what we see inside. Nice little bag here. You guys can go on this journey with me. We have. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I bought this because it was dirt cheap. If I can get it open, I will show you it. So for 10 US dollars, we have a factory sealed copy of Fable, The Lost Chapters on original Xbox. I am a big fan of the Fable series. I played one and two and three growing up. So I mean, hey, for the price they're gonna charge me, I will gladly add this to my Fable collection. And the other package here is another slim one. I'm guessing this is another DVD style game, which it is. More cheap modern video games. Devil May Cry 4, I was the only person who bid on it at $9.99 for a factory sealed copy of this game. I actually did own Devil May Cry 4 on Xbox 360 and I don't remember playing it much at all. But again, if you're gonna give me a factory sealed game for 10 bucks, I'll gladly add it to my collection, right? It's Devil May Cry. My hands are starting to feel kind of dirty from touching all these games. And this is the last package from the first super big box I have over here. But in the last package for here, we have, oh, I'll get you guys to join with me here. There's a couple more DVD style games here. This is not usual for me. I usually have a lot more cardboard. Maybe the next box is gonna have all the cardboard inside and this one has all the kind of more modern DVD stuff. But inside we have, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is for my other younger brother. He bought three different versions of Metroid Prime, three different complete in box variants because he is collecting all of the variants for Metroid Prime. This is the Kmart version that came with a Nintendo Power Guide. This is the Kmart version that came with a WaveBird controller. And this is the Target version that simply came with some coupons inside. So of black label Metroids, I'm pretty sure there's five or six that would be considered black label copies of the game. I think one is a bestseller, but uh, yeah. For some reason, Metroid got a whole lot of different variants and for some other reason he feels the need to collect them all. Either way I'm excited to finally get these to him. And just so you can see how big these boxes were here is the first one completely empty. Get these out of the way and let's start box number two. So first thing we got here is kind of wrapped in a whole bunch of padding. It's like a uh it's kind of like the egg test where if you were to drop this, you wouldn't want the items inside to break. That's how it reminds me of how it's packaged here. Oh, and I can see already that this is actually VHS. So we're gonna put this off to the side for just a little bit later. But for now, we have another box to open. Hopefully there's games inside. Okay, this is huge. Now we're getting into a little more serious of stuff actually. This is a factory sealed Lord of the Rings on Super Nintendo. A game that is pretty damn hard to find even complete in box. Oh, I'll put it the right way for you guys so you can actually see it. This is a game that just popped up on eBay as a newly listed bin one day. I think I paid 300 or 400 US. There is no price comparisons for it. 
I don't know if that's super expensive or not. All I had to go off of was the price of the complete in box game, which was decently expensive, right? There's a little bit of value to it. And then the fact that I don't see factory sealed ones. This is obviously before the movie and all of that, which makes it pretty cool, I think. Makes it not cool. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? This is one of those things where like it's factory sealed, right? Which is super cool. But part of me actually does wish I could pop this into the Super Nintendo just to try it out quick. I'll have to actually grab it on emulator at some point. So maybe I'm right about this box now having more of the cardboard and more expensive stuff in it. We're off to a really good start already, which means I might have to be a little more careful in using my knife. Do you guys like how I get down really close when I cut things and kind of put my face right in front of the blade? Oh boy. Oh my God. Okay, cool. Video games, video games, video games. It looks like everything in here is games. All right, let's just go ahead and start with the first one here. Just a complete and box game here. This is another one for my brother. Another one of his collection is buying all of the PlayStation 1 fighting games. He was able to get Darkstalkers 3 for a very fair price. Going into the next one here, Xbox 360 again which you can see again I just love the value proposition right now for some of these Xbox 360 games really really awesome titles like Dark Souls I think I paid 40 or 50 US dollars for this I'm not sure if this game was just printed into the dirt or if people don't care about it or I don't know for myself gaming as a teenager this is one of the best games that exists of course I put off buying a factory sealed one for the past like 10 years but um I'm glad that the price of it never really moved this looks to be the nicest DVD game I've bought so far which is huge because this one is absolutely going into the personal collection more dvd style games Let's see what we got here. You know, grading DVD games is easier overall than grading cardboard for the most part, but getting actual mint DVD games is still very, very difficult. Speaking of the franchise that I love, here is Fable 2 on Xbox 360. And again, I did opt to get the copy that has the Do Not Sell Before on the top label. Fable 2, not that hard to get, a little bit harder to get with the Do Not Sell on the top, but again, I'm glad that I could go into Xbox 360 games, PS3 games right now and get absolutely absolutely awesome games for like under a hundred bucks. If the prices of this stuff starts to go through the roof, I might have to pivot again to something else, but for now, I'm loving it. Just a quick shout out here as I'm nerding out about Xbox 360. Look at these awesome games I was able to pick up for the collection. Super, super, super excited for this. Next up here, something wrapped inside of a USPS package. So we'll see what we got. It is a green label Final Fantasy VII, which makes me think that this is one of my brother's purchases. But he bought the FF7 error print here that has Sephiroth back art on both sides. You can see here, I'll just move this disc so you can see the full image, which one side is supposed to be the airship, one side is supposed to be Sephiroth. This is a greatest hits error print of the game that has Sephiroth on both sides. So a pretty cool variant if you're the type of Final Fantasy collector who needs to have everything. And last thing here, this is very heavy. I have to assume this is a steel book of some sort. Oh shoot, okay, this is cool. I just saw what it was. This is one where I'm happy to finally add it to my collection at what I deemed was a very good price especially if it ends up being in nice condition. This thing is wrapped tight, so you're just gonna have to bear with me here as I find a way to open it. Looks like maybe I can just pull it out the top here, but here we go, here it is. We have the Metroid Prime Trilogy Steelbook, and this looks to be in beautiful condition overall, actually. This is one of those games that as soon as it released, it was scalped, of course. It was held en masse by collectors keeping it factory sealed, and has basically always been expensive and always a sought after Wii title. It did get a reprint, which helped the price a little bit come down, but then the price went back up on the Steelbook copies because the reprint was only a normal DVD case. And that's one of those worrisome things where if a brand new game comes out and the value of it spikes up a lot, there's always potential that they're just gonna print more of them. You can't ever discount the chance of Nintendo, Sony, Xbox doing that. But yeah, Metroid Prime Trilogy Wii, I will absolutely be getting this graded. Anything that I get graded now, I'll make sure to make a video where I go over it and assess the condition, and then I'll update you guys with the actual grades that we get. It actually shouldn't be that much longer until I get a VGA order back. I'm waiting for a bulk order that I sent in December and has been there ever since. Hopefully I get it back before the end of the year. I'm really excited to go through it with you guys and play a little game because I estimated every grade and we'll see if I get the grades right. And if I don't, I might have to pay you guys. So we'll see. I have a content idea. I'm excited to do it. We'll see how it goes. Next up, we have another weird contraption here of two boxes stuck into each other. Oh, we'll see what comes out. You can see here, we will remove the game from there. And if I can open it now from the side, I will remove again. So we have nesting eggs. And the last one, we got a DVD style game inside. It is... <laughs> 
Bam, baby! Another Bioshock Infinite for the boys. We're talking three copies of Bioshock Infinite added to the 401k profile. Insane, absolutely insane. Don't worry, don't worry. We got still got boxes, we still got content. Let's see what we got. Uh, we have... There we go, easy does it. It might be a VHS. It is a VHS. Nope, we're not gonna look at it. I'm keeping it until later. Next box, big USPS box. Whole bunch of stuff in here. This might be VHS as well. And another bigger USPS underneath that one. And that actually does mark the end of the boxes, which I think if I open up both of these boxes, it's gonna be VHS inside. So this is very likely the start of VHS block. All VHS. And one last box here. If there's games inside, we hit big. If there's VHS inside, you all go home. Come on games, Greg needs some viewer retention rate. We've got... Mm, we've got games! We've got games! Games! Games are inside! We have <laughs> another very random fighting game for my younger brother, Destrega. A game I had literally never heard of until he purchased it. Kind of a random polygon fighter. I don't know if we should expect much. Like I said, he's collecting basically every PlayStation 1 fighting game. So just adding it to the collection. And this is the last game of the unboxing. We have Madden 2004. Oh, 20 bucks for Michael Vick on Madden 04. I don't know if I'm just gonna grade it and sell it at this point. I don't know if I believe in the whole sports hype thing continuing and being sustainable, but right now this game is worth much, much more than $20. So I could probably just flip it as is, but another cool pickup and one of the first sports titles I've ever bought since all of this explosion of factory sealed games. And just a little bonus here, there are two PSA cards in this unboxing, we have a PSA 9 first edition Executor, and we have a PSA 9 first edition Brox Onyx. So just a couple of cards without a whole lot of value, but a couple of cards that I am adding to my personal collection. With that said, we are now entering into VHS block where most of the VHS that I actually did buy is anime based. So you may actually find it kind of interesting. This isn't gonna be like Hollywood movies or Warner Brothers productions. This is all um, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, and other random anime shit. And keep in mind, when I show you the these anime VHS, I am quite literally paying under $10 for every single one of them. I don't think any of these I paid over $10 per VHS. Like I say, a lot of the time, there's very minimal downside to this. And that's the kind of collecting that I love to get into. Well, let's just start with the first box right in front of me here. We have Dragon Ball Z, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball GT. Let's just start with the first two. Two Dragon Ball GT tapes here. Now I know Dragon Ball GT has a lot of mixed feelings. We have generations and proliferation. Most of the Dragon Ball GT VHS, all of the Dragon Ball GT VHS, they're, they're worthless. Like these are all probably three or four bucks per factory sealed VHS. Dragon Ball GT, mixed opinions, right? I didn't really like it when I was younger, especially the first arc or the first two arcs. But once they get back onto Earth and they actually start fighting Baby, it's a pretty damn good series, I gotta be honest. Here's Dragon Ball Z, one of the mini arcs in there with Garlic Jr. One of the Dragon Ball Z movies, one of the better Dragon Ball Z movies in my opinion, Bojack Unbound. Here we have just one from the Kid Buu series. This is the one where Goku actually uses the spirit bomb on Kid Buu, which pretty cool. I wish the cover art itself was more reflective of that, but Still, neat VHS. Yu-Gi-Oh! Battle City Duels, Friends Till the End. This is the episode where Joey is mind controlled and he battles Yugi over the, like, it's like a big pool tank of water that they're fighting over. And whoever loses the duel dies, like literally just dies. They're, they're handcuffed or chained in and they'll go into the water and drown. Cool ones for you Yu-Gi-Oh guys, if you know that episode. Another Dragon Ball Z one here, this one from the Majin Buu saga. Here's actually a really cool cover art that I love. Frieza, Fall of a Tyrant. This is getting right to the end of the, yes, this has Frieza defeated on the back here. You can see the last episode there with Frieza lying there cut in half. And then ending it off, we do have two more Yu-Gi-Oh! ones, Battle City Duels, Master of Magicians, where Yu-Gi fights Arcana, Arcana, and Obelisk the Tormentor, where Kaiba first uses Obelisk. And yeah, on these two, I absolutely love the cover art. Very, very cool. And again, with these VHS that I'm getting here, like a lot of these came in a big bundle, and that's why I purchased so many of them. Don't think that I'm purchasing these with, with outlook of making a ton of money or anything like that. I'm buying these mostly just because I like them. As is there a little bit of speculation that I'm taking part in? Yeah, there's a little bit for sure. But for the most part, it's just personal collection, personal enjoyment. Which brings us to this one that I put aside just a little while ago. This one is actually a real VHS, so I did lie to you guys. This one is Hellraiser, a second print of Hellraiser. I actually am going to tell you guys right now that I have never seen Hellraiser the movie. And it is a second print because getting a first print of Hellraiser is pretty damn difficult. So. 
So, I mean, this was in really good condition until I just dropped it there, but um, I think it can still it can still be pretty decent. Moving into these ones here, we have three clamshell style ones. I believe these are Dragon Ball Z again. As you can probably tell, Dragon Ball Z is one of my favorite shows ever. Not just my favorite anime ever, like Dragon Ball Z is just one of my favorite shows ever. But we got three clamshell copies here of BoJack Unbound. Like I said, one of the better Dragon Ball Z movies. You're gonna say, Greg, there's no reason you need three copies of BoJack Unbound. Which I would actually agree with you on that. Which is why I made sure to actually get four copies of BoJack Unbound. Because I agree 100%. No one needs three. That's fucking stupid. But four copies? Everyone needs four copies. So kind of neat here that you can see the variant. This is a slipcase version. This is clamshell version. This one over here, you can see it says BoJack Unbound edited movie. This one over here is the uncut version which if you didn't know the uncut version of the movie adds an additional two minutes so that's huge right that's two more minutes of bojack unbound goodness moving into the next box of vhs so let me just grab all the gt ones here quick we have reaction we have realization and they all have this weird like one word title rejection for the whole series they're all like this Here's actually one of the better ones, Ramifications, you can see with Baby there. As with this one, Creation, again, the Baby Saga, one of the best sagas of Dragon Ball GT, if not the best saga. Again, Salvation, this one's actually a really cool cover art there featuring the Super Saiyan Uzaru. And one more here, Calculations, which <laughs> I actually wish Super 17 was a better villain, just a better arc overall, but still a really cool cover there to have that. But again, much like me buying modern games, because vintage has gotten so damn expensive, I've just done a whole lot of pivoting with my collection where I can now buy a lot of stuff still for a lot less money and I'm having a ton of fun doing it. Like getting into VHS, buying up Dragon Ball Z VHS has been one of the most fun things I've done in years. If the shit you collect is ever just getting kind of too expensive, try to find a nice pivot. There's a ton of different things you can collect and sometimes there's collecting categories that you don't even know exist that you can get into that are way cheaper than what you're currently doing. So don't ever be afraid to try something out or buy something new, especially if it's cheap. Because maybe after you buy it and you get into it, you're gonna really enjoy it. And moving into the last box here, we have more VHS. So let's just start with the two that are not anime. Well, um, well, one's anime. Bambi 2 is anime, I think. I think you can definitely call that one anime. And E.T. And I bought E.T. just because it was like 15 bucks. I don't think it's rare at all, but this is just kind of one of those staple movies that we've all seen. So I thought it was pretty cool to pick one up. Bambi 2 is apparently like a really late release VHS, like 2003, 2006, something like that. 2006, it says on the back, 2006 VHS release. I didn't even know they were making VHS in 2006. Obviously, I'm sure like most of you, I've never seen Bambi 2. I didn't know there was a Bambi 2. When the fuck did Bambi have a 2? So when I saw it pop up, up as a buy it now for like 20 bucks. I just thought it was interesting. I guess it's kind of hard to find from what I've looked up. I genuinely don't know. So there's Bambi 2, there's ET. And then inside of this box, we have three copies here of two different Yu-Gi-Oh VHS. So I'm not gonna show you each one of them here, but I'll show you the sides. So you can see what it looks like when you own multiple copies of the same Yu-Gi-Oh VHS. We have two awesome VHS, one you've already seen. We have the Master of Magicians here, which says contains one bonus episode, which like, no, it doesn't. It just contains four episodes. They all contain four episodes. This one though, Match of the Millennium Volume 1, the start of the Yugi Pegasus duel. This sticker actually does mean something. It includes a little free mini CD inside, I guess. Interestingly, they actually just cut the wrap in order to insert the mini CD in there. Good thing, bad thing, I don't know. You can see on this copy, <gasps> well, you can see on this copy, not the one I just dropped, that there is no CD included. And at the bottom, expectedly, it is not ripped at all. Interesting, interesting. I have no idea if one is better than the other, if one is more collectible than the other, no clue. Like I said, I'm still learning this world. I'm still getting into it and having a ton of fun. But that actually will do it for today's Dunkaroo unboxing session. I thank you for showing up. And remember folks, keep dipping, keep dunking, and keep ruining. I think. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.